Hello, everybody. Welcome to Waiter to Win. It's lovely to be here in Durban by the sea, as we promised that we would be. We absolutely love Durban, and it's the finale, of course, into wrapping up this superb uh, season. There's lots been happening, of course, uh, in the last few months. One of the initiatives being the latest in terms of digital technology, where nowadays tab for racing is basically giving you the opportunity to make it simpler and easier and faster. You just got to hold up your camera to that television on that code. Up comes the URL, which takes you basically to the site and uh, kind of um, puts the bet up for you there and then. All you got to do is press the button and your bet is already taken on the tote. So that's what it's all about. Of course, you're going to mend naturally uh, with regard to how much you want to spend, but it's just so much more convenient as we move into greater times ahead. Live with our audience here from Marshall's uh, World of Sport. Thank you so much to Jeremy and his team and everybody here there for having us. We really do appreciate it. And we've got a super panel. Sheldon Peters being our top commentator here in KwaZulu Natal. Lovely to have you here with us, Sheldon. Thanks very much, Clyde. And to Marshall's World of Sport, a wonderful festival awaits us. And thanks to them very much for having us here. It's going to be their second year. They've done an outstanding job. Bring it on. Bring it on, absolutely, no doubt. Paul Peter about to be crowned the champion trainer of South Africa. Paul, what a great season. Yes, thank God. We've had a, a wonderful season. Uh, the horses all came to the party and we've won some lovely races uh, along the way. And uh, well, we couldn't have done it without uh, such uh, nice owners with uh, decent stock and without the horses, uh, we're nothing. And we've got a decent bunch of horses at this stage. No doubt about that. Sean Terry, a previous champion trainer, of course, is in, his, uh, in our company tonight. And Sean, also a great season for you. You must be very happy. Yes, a good season. We um, shaped well in the group races and got our fair share. Started off slow, finishing strong, and uh, let's hope we can end off strongly tomorrow. Yeah. Just on that note, just to congratulate Paul on a magnificent season. You know, he went from gun to tape and... Uh, Never looked like being caught, and uh, he's basically home and host, so well done. Well done. Well done to Thank Paul you. Peter. Very, very nice. Thank you, Paul. Congrats. Thanks, Sean. Rachel, uh, you've been in the headlines for good reasons, uh, which is great to see, riding a lot of winners, uh, in particular for Michael Roberts' stable. But um, it's lovely to have you tonight, and well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a privilege to be here. You've been in racing for a good number of years now. For those who don't know Rachel, Yes, I have. Um, started young and keep going. Still young, but uh, it's nice to have a little bit of experience behind me. Of course, you're still young. And of course, who's young is Muzi Yeni too. Um, our pocket power, so to speak. Muzi, good to have you on the brink of, of creating a record. Four winners away, I think, at time of recording this anyway, from 2000, right? Yes, I'm um, four away. Uh, been, uh, nah. I wasn't away until I was phoned up to say I'm quite close to one of my milestones. So grateful to be here and I've actually been blessed with a very very good safe career one of the few jockeys who haven't broken bones or collar bones especially with the amount of rides that I get to ride so quite be quite blessed uh, in, a, in a big way and uh, yeah back to the season I've had grateful you know I've, I always managed to pick up some few quality races and may go from strength to strength yeah, absolutely. May it go from strength to strength, and we'll celebrate that moment with you. Also part of our panel, who will be introduced a bit later, is one of our champion jockeys, Gavin Larina, and Monty Miramutu, one of our racing analysts, who also looks after Samanga Kumalo and his career, and we will talk to them just now. We'll start off with the first race. I've got the Marshalls sides up here just to have a look at how they're betting, and it's 9-2 to two about a gentleman's wager, top of the boards, uh, who is number eight on the card second choice number four and glamu is currently at 11 to 2. 11 sylvano's timer is at about seven and a half to one two looking for hounds is eight to one and the 10 willow express is 10 to one child i come straight to you let's talk about the race because i would imagine a race like this they're going to fly right they're going to go when you look at the first race it's nice to see marshall's world of sport dali arabian listed they open the meeting they close the meeting they've got the big race in between so let's hope for a tremendous day's racing talking about the speed in the first race now when i did my speed map number four in glamu number six reunion and a horse like number nine donald mcdonald they're going to all jump out there the pace will be genuine and if the poly is running quick they might be able to stay on however my first selection is number eight gentleman's wager i believe this is the horse they have to beat and then a horse like number seven cat daddy for the quartets 
talk to uh, Sean Terry about the race because you've got a Sean, you've got a strong hand here of good few runner, three runners. Personally, I I like Willow Express. Those who follow know, um, and I, I know it's not easy to find one out of the three or to you know to tip one to say this is the right one of the three because they all got chances. But what's your comment on Willow Express? I'm very happy with him. His work's been good. We are drawn a little deep, but he is a little better off at the weights with the other two. However, the other two do have the draw. Um, I think all three are live wires, very competitive race, and uh, they all three have chances. I would say uh, Willow Express, but for the draw. Willow Express, but for the draw, that's interesting. Of course, Rachel, you're on, uh, on Bowie. No, I wouldn't be surprised to see you Bowie right up there as you go throughout the race, right? This is his first run on the poly. Um, if he takes to it, I, I like his form line. I like the, everything. We've got the draw in our favour. So hopefully we'll be bringing one home for Hollywood and Mr. Terry. And it's always good when they give the thumbs up the trainers to say the horse as well. <laughs> exactly. In your favour. Paul Peters got a Reunion running here. And the interesting thing about Reunion was a very talented horse is whether or not it takes to the poly. And that may be the key, Paul Peter. Yes, uh, that's the question mark, whether he takes to the poly or not. Uh, his work's been superb. He's improved tremendously with the pacifiers, and uh, his behaviour has been much better. So I would prefer it if it was an 1800, but uh, we're taking our chances. There's not much on offer for him at this stage, so we'll go for the mile. And if he takes the poly, he should be in the money. Takes to the poly, should be in the money. Let's go on to the second race now. This, of course. It is time for you to get your bipods on. You got the bipod money ready, Sheldon? We got it ready, locked and loaded and ready to fire. What do you like the second? Second race, I'm going with numbers two and six. Number two, Antigua Knight from the Sean Terry stable after a cracking run in the grape two slipper. And then number six, Gobsmacked. Obviously, we don't know exactly how good this individual is. has been very, very impressive to date. I think those are the two horses for the short list. And then once you look beyond them, a horse like number 10, Ride On, there has been money about for this individual. But I'll pose the question to Sean Terry about number two, Antigua Knight. You must have been very pleased at the way she was coming coming on in the latter stages down the lane. Yes, I, I was very happy with her run, uh, straight out of the Maidens. Um, I think with this draw that she has, uh, she's got a lot of speed at home. I think she's a massive runner and I think uh, good value on the day for the, for the punters. Uh, I think Gobsmacked is the right, the right horse, the horse to beat, but uh, I'm quietly confident that we'll make it run. Having said that, the juveniles are improving at a rate of knots. There's a couple of them with decent form. You can never be overconfident if something flashes up on you, but I think I'll make the favorite run. That's and very interesting. Very confident comments coming from uh, Sean Terry's yard. So watch out for Antigua Night here. Let me ask Paul Peter. I see um, Warren and Furness here tonight with us. That's great for Ode to the Ocean, one of being the part owners, etc. cetera. And um, Paul, tell us about Ode to Ocean. I see the horse 25 to one. Got a Try affect the quartet chance? Or? Yes, that's a massive price. Uh, she showed us exceptional uh, work as a young two year old. Uh, she, she ran second to Sweet Pepper on her debut. She, you, we all know what Sweet Pepper came out and has done ever since. And then we brought it down to Durban and she beat the Colts quite convincingly. We then ran her in a, 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 a little feature in Joburg and coming out the pen, she got a bad bump and she pulled a lot of behind muscles and uh, she's been sidelined since uh, she's fit and well uh, she hasn't run for a while but fit and well with a decent draw i think definitely a place contender uh gobsmacked op the obvious horse to beat uh, she's got very very good uh half felt form but uh, out to the ocean she must definitely go into the quartets and try factors Okay, we won't leave Ocho. Thanks, Paul. We won't leave Ocho the ocean out of anything. It must go into the play. And I don't think the 12 to 1 is going to last that much longer uh, after listening to Sean about Antigua Night. So, Man Mercantor is the favourite in the third. It's currently a 2 to 1 favourite. Three Ridge Runners, the second choice at 9 to 2. Then, former gear, Darren Burrows tells me, put and collect that can't lose. Former gear at 6.5 to 1. Eight Captain bon Bombshell is 8 to 1. And then you've got Without Equal is trading at around. Uh, 12s and better about the others. Charles, it's place accumulator time. PA's, uh, how many runners are you going? Place accumulator wise, I'm going to go with three runners. I'll go with number four, former gear, number six, ocean time, and then throw in number 
eight captain bombshell. Now, it, while we're talking about the musket yard, obviously it's going to be a real race now. Ocean Time, Muzi Yeni. Muzi, I'm going to ask you about the, the two horses. You would have seen them working back home. Former Gears are classy looking individual. What went wrong with Ocean Time last time after running a cracker in the grade one? Uh, Ocean, I didn't ride in Ocean Time. Have you seen him work? Have you worked him? No, I haven't. I'm based in Joburg. Okay. But you give it any sort. You, what do you have? You looked at the form. What do you think, Moose? Um, I think I prefer others. I prefer others in the race. Yes. You come I, with my uh, love. <laughs> 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 um, this was McIntyre. It's come with some decent Joburg form. Uh, run around horses that are, are quite right. They running in that Grade One. Uh, Cold smile for the two year olds. Um, I think McIntyre for me is a massive, massive runner. I think the, the, he's got a good draw, he's got lots in his favor, he's good draw, comes with good form line. Former gear, yes, was very impressive. McIntyre from the draw and with the strong form line that he comes with it from Joburg, I think he's the horse to beat. Mm. And uh, let's, let's, Rachel's in that corner, so let's talk to you, Rachel, about Sun Blushed. I see one of the outsiders in the race. But maybe you can give us some guidance. You give it a place chance, or what do you think here? Yes, I definitely do. Um, he was not uh, sharp his last run where he won. He actually took me quite by surprise when he was paying 100, 100, 100 round a winner, I think. Mm. And uh, he's improved at home. He's given me a very nice feel. He's well. And honestly, I'm expecting quite a big run from him. Hopefully a place, if not a little bit closer. Hopefully a place, but there was some 33 to 1 about some blush. Rachel, confident, yeah? A little bit of confidence there. She's riding like a top, top, top athlete. So best of luck. Could really be the horse that we're to go with. Always good to know when they win like that. Still not 100%. I mean, that's always important when you know how that there's, a horse has got more to offer. Let's talk to Sean Terry now. Sean, without equal in the race, magic tattoo. Uh, tell me about these horses. Obviously, without equal, just come out the maidens. But uh, a bonus to have Richard Ferry on from a one draw. He's doing very well at home. I think uh, inclusion for wider permutations, it's hard to have confidence coming out of the Maidens into a race like this, but he is fitting well for anybody that might like him on form. Um, and the same sort of applies to Magic Tattoo, who was made a little bit too, use of, uh, too much use from a, a whitish draw and basically, you know, did too much early. But this, I think, is quite a tough field and the winner will probably come from three, four or five. I'm yeah. not too sure which one, but they, they've all seemed to have the form and they seem to have the draw, those three horses. So I would say those are the three. And um, if you're going a lot wider, maybe include me. Okay, but you've got a chance, no doubt. Swing upon a star. Paul Peter is running here. Paul, talk, tell me about it. Was this mile too far last time? Or? It's on, uh, uh, we, we were under the impression that he stays. On pedigree, he, uh, he should have, his brother gets a 2 4. So, but. Uh, He's just got too much gas, so we discussed it with Warren and the owners and we said we'll bring him down in trip, go bring him back to a 1200 and uh, take our chances. Uh, it's a very competitive feel. Uh, I like this horse Mercantour a bit. It shows good form in Joburg and uh, I think he'll be ideally course and distance suited, but uh, swing up on a star, definitely a place contender. Place chance. Stay with me, Paul, because I'm going to talk to you about Bless My Stars, who comes up in race number four now, which is the opening leg of the pick six, and it's the running of the Tequini, of course, and uh, they've got 92 about Bless My Stars. Time for Orchids uh, is Sean, joint favourite, Sean Terry, 9-2. to two. Then you've got uh, Canadian Summer, number one, who's currently at 11-2 to two on offer. Two Hold My Hand is about 7-7.5-1. Seven, seven to one. And the eight, none other, is trading at 10 to 1. They bet 14 to 1 and better the others. Just how good is, is Bless My Stars, Paul? Clutch is a very, very smart filly. But in saying that, we have thrown her in the deep end. Just her second outing, we're bringing her down for a group one at Gravel. But uh, very, very smart. And uh, she must have a massive shot. She, she, she's got a lot of class to her. A lot of class. I mean, it's a ridiculous question with her and Ma Ron here. Are they in the same company at all? Because there's a lot of collateral in there. That's why I'm asking the question. Yes, uh, I've never ever worked them together, but they, they're different type of horses. This filly would even go 18, 2000 in time to come. So she's got a lot of stamina. She's got an exceptionally good uh, pedigree, especially on the female line. Uh, a lot of stamina. And uh, I'll be disappointed if she's out the money with a big winning chance. 
Whilst Rachel's here with us, so she's riding for you, Miss Cool, in this particular race. Paul, um, you want to summarise it between the two of you? What do you think? I mean, she's got a chance, right? She's got ability. Yes, uh, she won the Colts Nursery. Uh, she's a smallish filly, so we've just freshened her up. Uh, Rachel's uh, uh, been doing quite a lot of work on her back home, and uh, she was happy with her. I think she's got a place chance. Uh, Rachel will be able to tell you more about her work. Rachel, yeah. let's talk about her work. Yes, um, it's been impressive work. Um, I said to Mr. Peter when I did her final bit of work that it was one of the best workouts I've felt. Um, I'm happy, happy with her and hoping that she'll give me what she's been giving at home. Yeah. In your mind, I mean, is she going to the front or, or how, how do you see her? I'll have to wait for Mr. Peter's instructions. Wait for the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Again, Sheldon, great. what's your take on the race? I mean, so we, before we go to Sean, what do we ask Sean about this? One? I'm going to ask Sean number three, time for orchids. I'll make this one of the better bets on the card. Looking at that last run from a 12 out of 12 draw, 23.9, 400 to finish, numerous winners from the first run. Sean, I believe from the draw, the step up to the mile, she's the horse they all have to contend with. Yes, I'd like to agree with you. I think um, everything is in her favour. I certainly was impressed with the last run. I feel I've got a, in a better space right now. And uh, I think she will give a bold showing. Um, a lot of horses to respect in the race. Again, these horses are improving. Some of them are going to be really good uh, three-year-olds. You've got to respect none other two. Very good form. Um, just on my other filly, uh, Rock the Fox, she's always shown me she was a top filly and uh, was always going to be going for this race. However, she lost her way and actually um, surprised me going off form a little bit. But her last run suggested that she's, uh, she's back to best and um, I'm sure she'll give a good account of herself. But having said that, time for Orchids is last run was our catching and a little bit of luck from the straw. Hopefully we can get the job done. Yeah, just refresh my, my memory, Sheldon. Came from the clouds last time, eh? Came from the clouds, came from 11th position, almost 10 lengths behind, made up the ground the last 200 meters. And I earmarked this horse. I said, next time over a mile, put and take. But with the two year olds, as we all know, they improve at different rates. So you can't yeah. be too confident, but they're offering nine to two marshals, will the sport, I'll be taking that. Will you? I'll be taking Strong it. about nine to two about this horse time for Orchids. I don't know, I think Paul Peter, if he knows, if they can put Maharani, he can work it out if he's got the summarise yeah. or not. But he hasn't, they haven't worked together, so we don't know. But he would have the answer. There's a horse in here called None Other that may well be a sneaker. I'm going to talk to Gavin Larina about it just now when he joins us. But Muzi is on a horse called Arari Gold. Won't be the first time Corey Lensley upset the apple cart, so to speak. Muzi, what do you think? No, she's a... Uh She's a, she's a lovely filly, uh, obviously step up uh, in a much, much competitive field. You know, in winter, we do find the right races. Um, there's not much speed. She had a soft lead and she, yeah, she had a soft lead. And I don't think the form line was that strong. Uh, my first selection and my, obviously I travel between Durban and Joburg a lot. I, was, I think this um, Canadian sum is well above average. I, I'd be more confident if I was riding it. <laughs> of course. Uh, but uh, obviously, I, was I think I was lucky not to win last time. I was trapped a little bit wide, ended up going a bit early. I was lucky not, not to have won. I think if it was falling up with three wins in a row, it would be current currently favourite and those to beat. It's got a very good draw. As, as a jockey, I know as some public draws are very, in, at Gravel, cro uh, draws are critical and. Um, some of these also have to give him starts, three to four, up to five lane starts. So I think it's those to beat. Okay. Just one question for me, Zia. The draw one, usually a draw one's imperative. I think there's only a two meter false rail and this horse lugs right to the outside. Have you got a game plan? No, seriously, he's going to have horses all around him. As long as Jason doesn't panic, he should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sure Jason will be okay. So there's some confidence in the first leg of the pick six with a few runners here. Race number four on the card. We're going to be back with our part two and panel where Monty Miramutu and Gavin Lorena will join us for the second half of the program. We're taking a bit of a break. We'll be back after this.